For a long time, the 3D world has been asking one question. Is Blender finally good enough for a professional pipeline? Well, looking at what's coming in Blender 5.0, that's the wrong question. The real question we should be asking is, how can any other software justify its price tag? This isn't your typical update. We are not talking about a few new features and small tweaks. The foundation being built in the Blender 5.0 Alpha, which you can test right now, points to be a massive shift in the industry. The line between a free open source tool and a multi-thousand dollar industry giant isn't just getting blurry, it's being completely erased. In this video, we are going to break down the groundbreaking features currently in the experimental alpha of Blender 5.0. We will look at how they are set to challenge the big expensive players and what it means for the future. A future that's being built out in the open for all of us. All right, let's start with the big one, rendering and viewport performance. For years, Blender artists have had a choice. EV for amazing real life speed, which was great for previews, and Cycles, the path tracing beast that gives you photorealistic results at the cost of time. Blender 5.0 continues to close that gap, but the biggest change is happening under the hood. The experimental builds are seeing the full integration of the Vulkan API, a modern graphics backend replacing the aging OpenGL. This is a huge deal for performance. Vulkan is designed for modern multi-core CPUs, allowing you to reduce overhead and speed up almost everything you do in the viewport, from sculpting and material loading to simply opening files. This transition future-proofs Blender and enables developers to add advanced features like HDR display support. Vulkan is already being added in the upcoming update 4.5, which is currently in beta. On top of this, Cycles is also getting a major upgrade for realism. A new method for calculating subsurface scattering called multi-bounds random walk is being added. This means materials like skin, wax and marble will look dramatically more realistic, handling light in a way that was previously very difficult to achieve accurately. So what does this mean for you? It means a much faster, more stable viewport experience thanks to Vulcan and a higher quality ceiling for photorealism in cycles, all for free. There are core improvements that directly impact character art, product visualization, and any scene demanding ultimate realism. This might be the single most important and least flashy update in Blender 5.0 and its direct shot at high-end professional workflows. If you have ever tried to import a massive 3D scan, a complex CAD model, or build a scene with millions and millions of polygons, you know the pain of Blender slowing to a crawl or crashing on you. Blender 5.0 fundamentally changes this by re-architecting the .blend file format to handle massive amounts of data. It now supports huge data buffers, which is technical way of saying it's being rebuilt to work with extremely heavy geometry without breaking a sweat. This change means files saved in 5.0 may not open in older versions, but it's a necessary step moving forward. This isn't just a feature, it's a removal of a roadblock. It opens a door for artists in visual effects, architecture, and manufacturing to throw incredibly dense models at Blender. It means Blender is no longer for just for creating assets for a pipeline. It's becoming robust enough to be the central hub of the pipeline, handling the heaviest data that studios rely on. This is exactly the kind of robust professional upgrade that makes big studios pay attention. Beyond the massive core updates, Blender 5.0 is delivering powerful new features that enhance unique creative workflows. One of the most exciting is for anyone doing 2D animation in a 3D world. Grease Pencil, Blender's tool for drawing 2D directly in the 3D viewport, is getting a huge feature. Motion Blur, this is massive development for hybrid 2D 3D animation. It allows 2D animators and illustrators using Blender to make their work feel more fluid, cinematic and seamlessly integrated with 3D elements. It's a sign that Grease Pencil is maturing into an even more production-ready toolset that no other single piece of software can match. This combined with continued user interface polish and improvements to the asset browser shows a dual focus. Not just adding power, but making that power more accessible. Blender isn't just trying to catch up, it's strengthening its own unique advantages and doubling down on the creative freedom it offers artists. 
So, with a more powerful render engine, the ability to handle massive industrial sized scenes and major boost to creative tools like Grease Pencil, what does it all mean? Does Blender 5.0 really make other softwares obsolete? For a huge number of people, freelancers, small studios, and even mid sized companies, the answer is getting very close to yes. It becomes extremely hard to justify spending thousands of dollars on a license when a free tool is not just playing catch up but it's actually innovating to solve real-world production bottlenecks. Of course, the industry giants aren't just going to disappear. The term industry standard is about more than just features. Big studios have pipelines built up for decades around softwares like Maya or 3ds Max. Maya is still dominant in high-end character animation, and Cinema 4D is a beast in motion graphics. But Blender's greatest weapon isn't just its feature list, it's the incredible speed of its development. Because it's open source, it can evolve and adapt faster than its corporate competitors. The features in 5.0 aren't just cool new toys. They are strategic moves that directly address the need of high-end production, making Blender a more viable option than ever before. The best thing about Blender or being open source is that you don't have to take my word for any of this. You can try it yourself right now. Just go to the official Blender website and look for the daily builds or experimental builds page. I will put the link in the description. From there, you can download the latest Blender 5.0 alpha build for your computer. But a word of warning, this is an alpha build. It is unstable, things are broken or incomplete and you should absolutely not use it for any real production work. It will crash and files you save in 5.0 might not open in older versions. Think of it as a test drive, not the car you drive to work every day. The direction Blender is heading is undeniable. The updates we are seeing in the 5.0 alpha, from the core architectural changes for massive scenes to render engine upgrades and unique creative tools are more than just simple upgrades. They are a fundamental challenge to the way the 3D industry has worked for decades. So the question isn't really if Blender can compete with the industry standard anymore. The real question is, how long can the industry afford to ignore the fact that the new standard might just be free? What features in the Blender 5.0 Alpha are you most excited to see? And do you think it's a real threat to the established softwares? Let me know down in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, a like and a share would be awesome. Thanks for watching.